I am watching you, Rodent. What's that supposed to mean? It is common knowledge that rodents hoard nuts, stolen technology, units. <sighs> okay. First off, I ain't a hoarder, nor a rodent. I know you have a stash hidden aboard this ship. Fetch it, now. There ain't nothing to fetch. Groot blew our stash on Contraxia. Peter Quill, tell the rodent that his selfishness endangers us all. Rocket, we could really use any extra units you have. How do I gotta spell it out for you? I don't got no units! Fair enough. You believe his lies? Oh, I ain't lying. Now why don't you leave me alone and bother someone else instead? I intend to. What do you want, Quill? If you're looking for units, check your own room. Open. So, you here to talk or uh, you just want a gear upgrade? Uh, can you upgrade me? Pretty please? Ain't this a nice bench? Perfect for tinkering. This work is worth more than your worth, Quill. There, all set. Anything else? You're not still upset, are you? It'd be a lot better if we didn't have three cycles to pay a fine. Hey, remember that time on Conlar? With the Badoon and that really hot Ascavarian girl? <laughs> yeah, her buddies would have spaced your stupid Humey butt if me and Groot hadn't busted in. I had things under control, mostly. Ha! <laughs> Too bad you're broke, Quill. I should be charging you for all the times we saved you. Name one other time you saved me. Contraxia, Nowhere, Parametar, Ceres, Contraxia again, Malador... Okay, 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 so I owe you. Big. I should have turned you in for Yondu's bounty. Sure as Scott wouldn't be scrounging for units to pay off your Nova girlfriend. Ex-girlfriend. But admit it, you like being a guardian of the galaxy. Still on the fence about the brand name, but uh, keeping the Milano as collateral was a pretty smart move. Never agreed to that. If you'd rather I turn you in. Don't worry. I know you put a lot into this team. I'll make it up to you. You better. Guys, don't forget to close the fridge. Sure thing, Mom Lord. Sweet tracks. Why does this thing look so sinister? Hey, who said you could touch that? I don't go into your room and touch your stuff, Quill. What? You hacked my visor and added a scoreboard to it while I was sleeping. Eh, that was different. I improved it. Also, did anyone tell you that you snore? I thought Drax was bad, but wow. Quill, you should really get that checked. You sound like a Torg. I don't snore. 
that loud. <laughs> yeah, okay. So what is this thing anyway? Kind of looks like a metal face hugger. That is clearly a spinal control unit. Yes, right, of course, a, a spinal control thingy. Back on Half-World, Kree scientists used these to keep us super soldiers in line. Uh, they'd press a big, fun red button and zap! Instant obedience. Holy crap. Rocket. How many of you super soldiers were there on Half-World? When the Kree started, a hundred, maybe. By the time I escaped, just me and Lila. She was the first one not to die from the control unit. And Lila is also a... What? A raccoon? Or not a raccoon? You gotta understand. She was afraid of them, and the control unit made sure we stayed in line. That I stayed in line. Oh, that sounds... awful. I can't imagine. So? I did what I do best. I found a way to overload the control unit. When the Blueskins let us out of our cage, kaboom! <laughs> I blew a hole into the side of the lab. What we didn't know, what I didn't know, was that the lab was protected by sentry bots. We got to the security fence and Lila covered me while I hacked the modulator frequency and uh, as soon as it opened, she pushed me through the door. I heard a die quill. Oh, rocket. Doesn't matter now. Past is the past, right? And that thing, it's just a reminder. What exactly did the Kree do to you? They ripped me apart and rebuilt me over and over and over again until I became this half-finished thing they could mold and shape and control. Oh, Rocket, I had no idea. I mean, I knew the Kree Empire was desperate, but... Do you know what it's like to lose all control of your body? To be in constant pain, trapped inside yourself, and able to stop the horrible things you're doing? <laughs> that control unit made sure I did what I was supposed to do. Oh yeah, whether I wanted to or not. <laughs> A neat, furry little machine of... Death. Didn't take long to figure out I was better off not fighting it. Okay. Then let's shoot this thing out the airlock. Have a little middle finger salute ceremony to the bastards who built it. Uh, yeah. I don't think I'm ready to let go of that part of me yet. Maybe one day. Are you 100% sure you want to keep it? What if it... Controls me? I decided a long time ago, Quill, that I would never let anyone control me again. As far as I'm concerned, this is just another useful piece of junk and a few bad memories. I'm sorry you had to go through all that, Rocket. For real.
Hey, Bluebird, you copy? I know you think I sold you out, and... Uh, Gamora, I was just... Who are you talking to? What's a Bluebird? It, um... was Yondu's call sign. He was Bluebird, and I was the kid. <laughs> Let me get this straight. Yondu Udanta, leader of the Ravager Space Virus, scourge of the Sirius system and all-around scoundrel, used Bluebird as his call sign? <laughs> Even had it embroidered on the back of his jacket. Amazing. It was amazing. Pretty much from the day we met. How did you two meet? Terrans and Centaurians aren't exactly neighbors. We met on Chitari Prime, about three years into my sentence. Wait, Yondu was a prisoner of war? I, I, I thought the Ravagers were neutral. They were, and they also weren't. The Ravagers had a simple code. Steal from everyone. Yandu said it made them neutral. But they weren't. I specifically remember several Shatari transports being hit when I was still... You know. They hit just as many resistance ships. Until a Shatari cruiser uncloaked in front of them during a raid and... Yandu ended up on Shatari Prime. With you. Mm -hmm. After we broke out... He could have left me on some space station or dropped me off at the nearest Nova Corps base, but he didn't. Instead, he invited me to join the Ravagers. You were with them a long time. Must have enjoyed it. I did. Being a Ravager was the first time I felt like I really belonged, if that makes any sense. I felt the same way when I joined Richard Ryder and the Resistance. Like I was finally in control of who I wanted to be. Yes. Exactly. Those first few years, it was... It was like I had joined this really big, really dysfunctional family, which, now that I'm hearing it, would make Yondu my... Space dad? <laughs> Could have been worse. Yondu and I were cellmates. <laughs> first thing he said when they put him in my cell was, Boy, don't be going and getting attached, because I'm just here for the food. And the food was pretty terrible, so... Yeah, that sounds like Yondu. I had cellmates before, and none of them lasted long. The Shatari have these... gladiatorial games, and... You got used to people dying. I'm not sure about that, but... I didn't expect anyone to last long. I also didn't have my translation implant back then, so I might as well have been alone. But Yondu? He actually spoke English. Said he'd offered to translate in exchange for extra rations. So even in the snake-infested hellhole, ever the schemer. It's something we had in common. I had been scheming for a way to escape since the day they took me. I just needed someone like Yondu to make it seem possible. How did you escape? <laughs> well, let's just say it was equal parts simple, complicated, and kind of embarrassing. But, it ended with the two of us delivering a transport full of stolen supplies straight into the hands of the Resistance. For a buck a load of units too, I bet. Anyway, once we did, there was no going back. I was a Ravager. <clears throat> well, if you don't mind, I think I'd like to be alone for a bit. Oh, yeah, sure. I'll see you around. Well, well, well. Let's see if we can find some stray units in here. Really? Thirty-seven units? We appear to be 6,963 units short. If we intend to keep our ship, Peter Quill... I know, I know. We clearly... Need a plan. And reconsider my initial proposal. Oh, no, not Fin Fang Foom again. Yes, we should go after Fin Fang Foom. Drax, there are easier ways to get paid. Like, what about selling Gamora's crap? What? Oh, come on. You've been hoarding them stupid knickknacks ever since you first joined us. I mean, 
Don't tell me they ain't worth nothing. The quarantine zone was always there. Holding out on My figurines are not knickknacks. Huh, team's in trouble. Then you can't be bothered to make no sacrifice. Of course, for the mock I will sacrifice system. your head. And take us to the majestic uh, mountains yeah, of Kakaran. Guys! Let's just... hear Drax out this time. Fin Fang Foom is the fiercest, most legendary monster in the galaxy. It shatters the bones of all who go after it. The skulls of the greatest hunters are impaled upon its fangs. Well, imagine the glory of such a death. Our goal isn't death, Drax. Glorious death! Out of the question. Well, in that case... You're not selling my stuff! I am Groot. I am Groot. He says we should combine both ideas. Sell Gamora's trinkets to Fin Fang Foom. It is brilliant. Yeah, you know, the only problem with your plan is that Lady Hellbender only buys monsters, and you are not a monster. He's not. He's the sweetest, most... I am Groot. No, you don't. This ain't something you can pretend. I am Groot. Oh, yeah? You want monster? I'll show you monster! Whoa, guys! Groot, are you really offering to- No, no, he is not offering that, okay? It could work. Sell Groot? I guess we could bust him out after. Absurd. Lady Hellbender seeks the monster within. The small ugly one is clearly the correct choice. He is cruel, sadistic, and his soul is filthy and filled with rage. The monster Queen would pay a great sum for such a creature. Really? How great? How are you okay with this? Because I know what I am. And I know what he ain't. I am Groot. I vote we sell Groot. I honestly think Lady Hellbender will go for it. Yeah, well, I vote for not Groot. I also vote for the creepy little beast. Two votes each. Peter? Well, I think Groot's more convincing in the traditional monster sense. Groot, buddy. First of all, thank you. And second of all, I want you to know we're gonna bust you out of there right after, okay? I am Groot. All right, let's do this. Let's go sell a monster. We're not seriously flying into that. You say the weather patterns of Seknarf 9 are tied to the temperament of its ruler. That's not how women work. Or weather. Anyways, I'm sure it looks worse than it is. There! That's Lady Hellbender's fortress. Get us in close, Quill. I don't want to walk in this. Well. <laughs> yep. Problem. Flying the wrong way. Nah, he's not flying at all. Guys, relax. Just one. Liner. Adjustment. <sighs> Piece of cake. <sighs> you can't be serious. What? This way we can scope things out before we finish the transaction. We're like a hundred clicks from her base. You know how much I like scoping. Nope. Okay. Next time, I'm flying. Are you sure the leafy one is ready for this? Nope. He'll be fine. Don't you get all gloomy right now. Don't help. Because your constant complaining does? <laughs> You, you are complaining about the short one complaining. We're all complaining. Happy? Hey, Groot. You think I got time to build a sonic umbrella? Right, Groot. 
Oh, come on, it's only gonna take a tick. I still believe it is a mistake to sell the tree. I am broke. Ha! Yeah, that's right. Maybe you're the mistake, Musclehead. That does not make sense. Maybe Groot misspoke. You could say he, uh... Uh... Made a mistake. Aw, oh, you're way too soft to be a monster, big girl. Yes, you are. Get missions on nice, warm, dry plants. Paramitar did have a nice forest because it was dry. Eh, it looks broken. Maybe Rocket can fix it. <laughs> Groot! Hey, buddy. I was just uh, checking to see if everything was okay. And it is. Okay. I am Groot. Too bad this translator's busted. I was hoping it might have Groot stored on it, or something. I am Groot. That way I could download it into my translator. I'd love to know what your thoughts are on stuff without, you know, Rocket always filtering it. I am Groot. You know, I didn't always have a translation implant. I mean, I was failing Spanish before I left Earth, not that Spanish would have prepared me for all of this. Man, those first few years, do you know how hard it was to get by without having any idea what people were saying? Half of the languages out here sound like white noise, weird birds, and messed up theremins. <laughs> I don't even want to know what Rocket actually sounds like. <laughs> TV did not prepare me for the realities of living in space, let me tell you. I'm cool. Honestly, man, you're lucky you have Rocket. I mean, I know what it's like to be surrounded by people and have no one understand you, how lonely that can be. I'd have been lost. You must have been lost too, before Rocket and, and us. I am. I probably don't say this enough, but you really are an important part of the team. I can't imagine the Gardeners of the Galaxy without Groot. And who knows, if this thing does have your language in it and Rocket can download it somehow, or hack it, or... I don't know. It'd be nice to finally talk to you. For real. Actually, hold that thought. Yo, Rocket! What? Can you come here for a sec? What do you want, Quill? I'm busy. Think you can see if this translator has Groot's language on it? It doesn't. You didn't even check. Don't need to. Cheap scut like that don't have rare language packages. And even if it did, it's beyond salvageable. Really? Wait, do you have Groot's language package installed in your translation implant? Do I look like I'm made of units? Only folks who got that language package are rich people. So you actually speak Groot, then? You mean Talinizen? And yeah, I speak it, more or less. Me and Groot been bounty hunting together for a decade before you came along, Quill. When you've been working together that long, you develop a common understanding. I am Groot. You say misunderstandings, I say open to interpretation. I am Groot. They didn't go sour. We didn't need those jobs anyway. <laughs> so you guys learned to understand each other over time. And with the help of a spreadsheet of Groot's lexicon, which ain't no easy feat when your entire language sounds like I am in Groot. So there's hope for us yet. I am Groot. Glad we had this little chat. I am Groot. Awesome. Cool. That Groot has a rich, velvety voice.
Smells like llama breath. This could all have been avoided if the rodent had relinquished his hidden cache of units. How many times do I gotta tell you I ain't got no units? At least 43. That's how many times I've had to deny being a shapeshifter before Drax moved on to something else. I still have my doubts. It was not possible for you to slip into combat armor this fast. I use a lot of lotion. No wonder Rocket's the way he is. Set foot on Seknarf 9, Drax, but you're awfully composed. In other circumstances, I would be thrilled. But we will humiliate ourselves by trying to sell sentient lumber to Lady Hoven. Don't she like lumber? What about the legend of her mighty battle axe? Not so sure about tooth cleaning tablets. Manual brushing is where it's at. yourself you love rain you plark and plant bet we could have made some money if we'd stopped by nowhere first will you please stop I can't believe I'm about to say this but how about some positivity for a change positivity how? We're on some crazy hurricane planet, about to be soaked to the bone, on our way to squeeze our last chance at free- I am Groot. No, we should not go. We got it. It's different. They say that Seknarf 9 is inhospitable to soft-bodied beings. We shall see how you fare, Peter Quill. We accomplish nothing by lingering in the ship. How about staying dry? That's an accomplishment. Of course, it had to be raining. I hate wet. Hope that jacket of yours is waterproof. Are we going? Because I'm ready. That's sweet, but we both know you ain't got money to buy no umbrella. Wait, isn't... Okay, here we go. I ever mentioned how much I hate rain? Hellbender's castle isn't even that far. That is not a castle. It is an impregnable fortress. So how do we impregnate it? Ask Peter! <laughs> Let's just get closer. We'll figure it out on the way. There is nothing to figure out. As beast merchants, we will easily gain access to Lady Hellbender. Good! We've already got a beast. All that's left is the merchant part. Good thing I put on my official merchant costume. There is no such thing. Right? The fact you ain't sure don't vote so good. Captain Girlfriend 
anyway. Out. Hey, is my jacket all right? At least you got a jacket. Some of us are soaking here. Less whining, more walking. Hey, Stormlord, we ain't seriously walking through this. It'll take forever in this storm. Stop complaining. The hardship will strengthen your spirit. We won't walk, we'll hike. It'll be fun. Team hiking trip. That's just a fancy word for walking. Come on, at least you won't be bored. Drax neglected to mention this buyer lived in the middle of a Florkin monsoon. It was not pertinent to our task. Can we at least wait it out in the Milano? We're not wasting time with that Nova Tracker counting down. Okay, guys, if we just keep our footing, it'll be a straight shot across. I agree. The bottom way looks drier. The bottom way is death. We got this. Just don't fall and we'll be fine. Agreed. We must face Lady Hellbender's rage head on. Almost sounds like you want to get hit by lightning. I would not expect a Chitauri traitor to understand the underlying value. The underlying value of getting killed? Of being direct, you child of subterfuge. What is your problem? Lady Hellbender scoffs upon duplicity and dishonor. Can we refocus here? We're here to trick some lady, not kill each other. She's not just some lady. Lady Hellbender is a known warrior. And a queen. And stinking rich. Exactly. She's a stinking rich warrior queen businesswoman. And she won't be able to resist a good deal. Same as us. Perhaps some of us. If Lady Eight is so powerful, why does she live on this scutball? Technoc 9 is her ancestral home. Concept you are clearly unfamiliar with, Abomination. Where you're from ain't what matters, Meathead. It matters to Lady Hellbender. Behold! Lady Hellbender's domain in all its glory. Looks like a bunch of noodle bowls. Great. Now I'm hungry. And yet, you cower from Lady Hellbender's majestic rage. This storm really ain't doing it for me, Quill. It is no storm. It is her monstrous breath. Yeah, well, her breath ain't doing it for me either. She doesn't even know we're here. Can we at least agree this was the worst landing in history? So what if it's the right planet? It's the wrong side of the right planet. I, for one, embrace your challenge, Lady Hellbender. Okay. So maybe this wasn't my most perfect landing. Happy? No. Guys, focus. Keep an eye out on those big blue ones and take cover when they hit. Or we'll get blown right off. Good advice. Okay, this might be more dangerous than I thought. Yo, Quill, fortress is this way. Of course he knows we're on the clock. Three cycles! It's called scouting, okay? No, it's called going the wrong way! Are you disoriented, no. Peter Quill? Even more than usual! I'll have you know my sense of direction is impeccable. Says the guy who landed on the wrong side of the planet!
You should have gone to Markham 4. Hey, check out the old resistance ship. Thing's been shot to hell. No doubt by this one and her Chitauri friends. We weren't friends. Uh, guys. I am good. Eh, not sure. But it ain't moving now. I would be wary, Rudy. Uh, you know, when I survive freaking half world, I think I'm scared of some little. Bit. Ah! from its bones appears to be nothing! Enough with the jelly! Break its bones! The blob's on a warpath! To the bones! What? I don't know! Don't eat him! Fire! It's gooey outside! Keeps redecorating! Like? We are outside Lady Hellbender's sanctuary. The creatures here are not her pets. You sort of do look like food. We're gonna be food if we don't climb out of here. Where the flark is she going? There's a trail going through the jungle! Try to find a way up! 
This husk should be easier to climb than the muddy terrain. I ain't comfortable calling it a husk. Having fun? Didn't think I'd ever be shooting at a resistance ship. Drax, you could pull this reactor out gently, right? If it were combustible, the rodent would have shot it by now. He makes an excellent point. Now I continue ripping it apart. No, no, no. I think we're good. You ever fly one of these things, Gamora? No doubt she shot them down. I fought the Shatari, same as you. And yes, I flew one. Along with two other ships for the Resistance. Ugh. Lower that wing somehow. I'm going to scout ahead. Try not to kill yourselves on the way up. There they are. Wing controls. Need your expert skills again, Rocket. All right, Rocket. That wing control panel is all yours. It still works. Great. Everyone watch out for beeping red lights. What? Why? This is a resistance ship. We'll be lucky if there's only one booby trap on it. Clark, that don't sound like no jelly thing. They say that Lady Hellbender's call echoes throughout the planet. That don't sound like no lady either. I'm eager to experience Lady Hellbender's legendary menagerie. <laughs> Careful! Looks like something big moved through here. Yay! This jungle is majestic. In an everything's trying to kill you sort of way, sure. If you see anything with claws the size of Drax, let me know. I thought we already had our monster. What's she tracking this thing for? For sport. Nothing wrong with a little sport. A girl has to keep busy. You are looking for trouble, assassin. Some kind of cave. Maybe it's got hidden treasure. Or hidden bodies. This place is a flarkin' maze. 
All those trees look like... Like giant strings of saltwater taffy. You sure you want to get lost out here? Relax. I'm just looking around. Where did you learn this clairvoyance, assassin? Huh? You never learned to track? Tathians do not chase our prey. We lure them and await the perfect moment to strike. That can take a while. Patience is a virtue of the hunter. Uh, please don't let there be a space baron here. Goo. Monster eggs. Yay. Okay, so note to self. If it looks like a monster cave and smells like a monster cave, and you're on a monster planet. Just trying to stay ready. Jelly dudes, I took care of it. What, Scott? I knew I should have come down earlier. Wait, so where are you? Cave with that. Where are you? Still checking things out. <laughs> nice hidden passage. Everything okay in there? Are you dead, Peter Quill? Or merely severely wounded? Stop worrying. I ain't far, Quill. Scream really loud if you find another blob creature. No, I will. Hey, um, listen, while it's just the two of us. What's up? Uh, you're busy, exploring. Just meet me in the main cave when you're done looking around. All right. Where's Groot? I told him to wait up there. He may need to get between the other two, the rate they're going at it. At least he's got long arms. I'm not exploring, Quill. Because, uh, I really need to talk to you. There's something, um, personal I need to get off my chest. What's going on? Look. I'm not sure about this whole selling Groot thing. Rocky, we've been over this. It's gonna be fine. Yeah, but what if it's not? What if something bad happens? Groot's the only real family I got, Quill. He's the only one who's accepted me for me. You don't know what he's been through. The way he's been treated. Groot offered to do this. And if Gamora offers to tell a joke, you're just gonna assume it's funny? 
Not sure I get where... Th I'm saying Groot ain't built for scheming. He ain't no monster. We don't know that. It's obvious. Maybe to you, but three out of five of us think he's monster enough. So give him a chance. He knows what he's doing. Fine. Have it your way. Come on. The sooner we get the Lady Hellbender, the sooner we can focus on paying that stupid fine. Easy for you to say. You ain't the one getting auctioned out. Huh. We're fine. You worry too much. Still no sign of whatever made those claw marks? No, just some jelly dudes. Then it must be out on the hunt. You sure you want to get lost out here? Peter Quill, I have found the way forward. You sure, Drax? No. Good enough. 